Courage. Culture. The VA thing is just amazing. I mean, oh, the VA thing has been the newest, most shocking thing that has happened in American culture, I, mean, I would say, in the last 25 years. To see the media, they keep doubling down on insanity. This is so obvious. These are people that laid their lives on the line. And we made a choice as a group of people in charge of healthcare, whoever they may be, to shuffle these people around to have the numbers look good, not caring whether they live or die. This is our future. This is the healthcare of the future. And this is the dropping of the ball by the administration without any accountability. How can you, as a media, not freaking blow the horns. So, this has gotten down into the very DNA of what we are dealing with. If this does not come out as a scathing, horrible, negating, horrible review of this administration, which it won't, but if it doesn't, we've completely lost the heart and the mind of Americans. If there isn't a pushback. Now, we don't know that there isn't a pushback. This is such an indictment on the media. Exactly. Because, because I'll tell you what, this is the thing that I don't get about the scandal. So when you walk yourself through the scandal, and by the way, I reported this on the podcast a month ago. The media has just now asked a couple questions to Carney. You have veterans, and I can attest to this because I've been to VA hospitals. Everything they're saying is true. You have veterans that are saying two years out to get, to get in to see the doctor. So legislation is passed by quote-unquote bureaucratic legislators who want to appear to be doing the right thing. So now these VA hospitals that are all run by leftist appointees since 2008, these guys are given bonuses if they adhere to this legislation, which is two weeks. So they create a bogus list, receive bonuses. By the way, the thing that the media isn't telling you that I've done in my own research, 58% of the VA's budget goes to administrators, which is sure. bureaucrat hell. Not doctors, not nurses, and not that trips, bureaucratic hell. Now these guys get more money for creating a bogus list. There's a report in the Midwest where a guy laid in his bed for 48 hours before somebody even realized he was dead, which means nobody came in to turn him, nobody came in to change his sheets. It's so vile. Okay, so that's the story, right? So that's the story that everybody is talking about. What they're not talking about is the fact that this has been going on for years and years and years. They're acting, the way they report the story is this is some new phenomenon, thing that they all knew about this, and they just kept whitewashing it over it. So I'm thinking to myself, the souls and the heart and the interior realness of these administrators and the uh, politicians. You have to be so cold of a human being. I mean, look at Benghazi. This is a horrible thing, but look at Benghazi. I mean, these people died because of an election. You've got to be dark. You and I, we have a, a standard of morality. We have a standard of humanity. We have a standard of behavior as far as what is right and wrong. And maybe we're antiquated, or maybe there's some sort of like gray morality that uh, the administration deals in that we don't quite understand. But the truth is, a person's life, a person's existence, a person's health, as a human, you should care, right? You should care if the people that you sent to, to, to buy and sell guns to a certain part of the country are going to be killed. You should care. You should, there's something inside of you that should say, I don't care if I get reelected. This person's existence is more important than, than me being real. Well, well, these people are veterans. So in other words, these people have literally taken shrapnel okay, okay, for your so, way of life. So, so let's and you, imagine. And you can't get animated about even that. You no, 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 no. Let's imagine everything inside of you tells you that we're imperial, we're evil, our military is evil, we're imposing our views upon the world, we just take what we want, we're bullies. You're not going to have compassion. She just comes across your desk in 2008. You're not going to give a blankety blank blank blank, and I was tempted to swear there, even though I don't swear, because this makes me so mad. You're not going to care. So, so what? A couple of veterans die. These guys are horrible monsters anyway. Your numbers look good. That's all you care about. And these people are progressive, liberal, inhumane people. And it sounds horrible because of my political views. You may say, well, this is the freight train of political views that come behind my statement, but the truth is they don't care. And that is the actual truth of what's happening here. They don't care. 
I mean, did you see the report about them going on college campuses? I keep going back to Benghazi. This is a big deal. The VA thing is even a bigger deal. I know that. But what do you think about Benghazi? Nobody knows. They have no idea. What's Benghazi? Who's he? But see, that's an indictment of of the media. But what I'm interested in, and I can't quite get a read on this. I can't get a beat on this because I'm not 100% sure. But so, so let's say 50% of the country just simply hasn't heard. That's media malfeasance. We all know that. Even leftists probably instinctually know that. The omission of, of knowledge gives you a little bit of a pass. But let me ask you a question. If you're a person not in the politics, you even lean Democrat, you know, Obamacare is, it sounds like a nice idea. I'm genuinely interested in what a person must be thinking here. So this story comes down the pike that basically the veterans are being treated like cattle, left to die on the altar of bureaucracy, in a microcosm of what essentially is Obamacare. It's the single-payer hellhole system where there's death panels and all these things that people have always said. So you don't think, if you hear that as a member of the American constituency that isn't even overly political, do you think that that matters at all in your overall view of where we're headed? No, no, it doesn't. plain... I don't see how you don't correlate the two because if they if they, let me I I did a podcast called the government doesn't care about you if they don't care about that dude how do you possibly convince yourself that they're going to care about you I mean how, what what kind of somersault in your head are you doing to of delusion to where you think that these bureaucrats give a damn about you I mean it's a tier system do you, the level of apathy that has been built over the years apathy as far as politics go. Um, self-obsession. So it's really hard to put in the words because I'm dealing with common sense, but I'm also trying to express it in a non-common sense way. People in general, like the general public, obviously not the informed people. I mean, I know people who are not really political, who, who kind of have a, a feeling that, well, okay, this is really going wrong. My Second Amendment rights, my freedom of speech, and taxation, blah, 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 blah. They're starting to get kind of some sort of opinion on what's going on. But the general public, not those people, they don't freaking care. They don't care. They yeah. just don't yeah. care. I mean, these people who fought, these people who friends died, the guys that left of them, the guys that were right of them died. Now they're sick. Now they're traumatized. Now they're dealing with certain issues. They're they're letting them die so their numbers look good. They don't care. They don't hear this story. And when you have a mass group of people who feel that way, which are, they don't care, you can control them. You you have complete yes. control, yes. And, and that's what we're dealing with. I think I'm so disheartened by the narcissism coupled with the, the almost generational brainwashing and the apathy that we take in by the spoonful. I think the combination and the cocktail that uh, that is breaks my heart so often. It's, it's a yep. complete envelopment of silly the view, TMZ, cloud around everybody's head, no matter where you look. It's just nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. This is as potent a political pill as you can get, and it doesn't move the needle. And it, it can become very, very discouraging. But when I read history, and I look at how they push back on Woodrow Wilson's madness, I look how they push back on FDR's nonsense, and I, I see... These progressive tyrants veer their head in history, and I see that these men who were writing the most brilliant, articulate justifications for the Constitution, and they were in the trenches. They were in the trenches. Sometimes it cost them careers. You have the, the Bonhoeffers of history. I see that men who lay it on the field, and they take whatever they can, and they put it on the field because they believe in it, I see that sometimes the moment can't quite envelop what's going to happen in the big picture. And that's the, that's the encouraging thing to me is that when you're right in the trenches, you're looking around and all you see is bloodbath. But what you don't see is the little inches that you're moving or right. it might not maybe be it's us. Not, it, maybe exactly. it's not you and I. Maybe it's somebody that hears us that, that's heart or mind. That's, is right. that's exactly and, and, where my and, head's at. And, and that goalpost is moved. Maybe it's our kids. Let me tell you something about kids. It is awesome how they copy you. And I'm thinking of this as a father. The things I say and do especially in these tentative years where they just emulate you and they love you and they want to be like you. I'm trying to be the man that my son needs to see. So when he becomes a man, he has someone to harken back. He has a, he has a, yeah, so, so when he, what, trust me, when our children 
are adults. It's going to be needed a thousand times more than right now. Right, right. They, hold the line. I think that should be the point. Hold the hold line. The line. Hold to just shout out the truth of uh, time and memorial as far as what is right and wrong. And it is so taboo to do right now. To say what's wrong is so taboo. To say this is not what God wants for us as a people is taboo. But when their stomachs begin to grumble for truth because they've starved. And eventually will happen. This is not going to be okay. It is written in our DNA to know right and wrong. And we have to write this on our children's heart. It's a responsibility. Courage. Culture.